This video shows how to customize the way your inspection reports look. PalmTech gives you a ton of options to customize the way your inspection reports look. This customization is done in Report Settings. We can get to Report Settings either by clicking on the Settings tab or by clicking on the Report Settings icon on the toolbar. Let's click on the icon. The Report Settings screen has six tabs and each one of these tabs have different options on them that you can change to control how your report looks. Before we get to make any changes, let's take a step back and take a look at how the inspection report looks using the out-of-the-box report settings. To do this, we'll close out of the screen by clicking on OK and then go to Print Preview. It starts off with a cover page followed by the table of contents. As we flip through a few more pages, we can see that we have a checklist style report. It uses a dark green color throughout, and we don't have a logo added in yet. If we go to the end of the report, we can see our summary section. Now that we've seen the default look, let's close the print preview, go back to the report settings, and make some changes. The first change we're going to make is to edit a couple of colors, which we can do by going to the Colors tab. Here we can see the standard colors that are set up. We can customize these colors to use the exact ones that we want. Let's say we want to brand our report to match our company colors, and that one of our colors is orange. Let's rename Accent Dark to Orange and click on the Edit to change the color to orange. Changing the color is easy as all you have to do is move the red, green, and blue sliders until you have the desired color. If you have a specific hex number you want to use, you can type that in as well. Once you have the color you want, click on OK. Let's make one more change and modify the color for the accent light to be a light blue. Now that we've taken a look at changing the colors, let's go to the Header tab and look at how to modify the header at the top of each page. There are two approaches that we can take to setting up the header. The first is that you can make a simple changes by modifying the preset format. The second option is to create a custom header by clicking on the Edit Customize Layout button. Let's go with the second route and take a look at setting up a custom header. Here we are looking at the Customize Header screen where we have quite a few options to set up a header exactly how we want. To get started, let's add in our logo, which we can do by clicking on the Locate Logo button in the bottom right corner. This brings up a screen where we can find our logo and add it in. Now that the logo is in, we can change the size of it as well as change its location. Let's make it a little larger and move it up a little so it starts in the top left corner. Right now the logo is being partially covered by the page number and the date, so let's move it to be centered below the company name. We'll move it down a little so it's not overlapping with the company name. We can add something new to the header by clicking on Add Element and simply typing in what we want. Let's say we wanted to say Inspected by John Smith. We'll change the color to be our accent light color so that it matches the other text in the header, and then we'll also adjust its placement. Let's say that our header is set up the way we want, so we'll click on Close. That is how you set up a custom header. Now let's take a look at our cover page options, so we'll click on the Cover Page tab. This tab is similar to the header tab in that you can either use the pre-built cover page options or customize your own. The box is already checked for include cover page. If you don't want one, simply uncheck it. Options 1 through 4 are pre-built formats that you can choose from or you can select option 5 and set up your own. We already have option 5 selected, so let's click on edit custom cover page. Editing your cover page works just like editing the header, so we won't cover it in detail, but since we're here, let's adjust how our logo is set up. We'll make it larger and adjust the placement. 
Now that we've finished, we'll click on Close. Now let's take a look at how to change some of the important settings starting with changing the way ratings are presented. To do this, we'll go to the Page Options tab. At the bottom, you have the option for View Ratings. Right now, it is set to checkboxes, but let's change it to say As Text. What this will do is remove the checkbox look of the report. Ratings Keys is the information that shows up at the top of each category. Instead of having it just show abbreviations, you can have it show full ratings key, which includes the rating, its meaning, and if you're using a checkboxes, its abbreviation. Let's change the rating keys to full. Also on this tab, we can change where the summary shows up. Right now it's set to show at the end of the report, but we can easily move it to the beginning by clicking on the rating summary and moving it up. Another popular change is changing how the category headers look. To do this, we'll go to the Margins tab. In the middle, we have the Category Header section. Let's change it from the left centered reverse block to be left justified with bold line. And then we'll change the size to medium. Now that we've made a handful of changes, let's go back to Print Preview and take a look at how the report looks now. The first change that we can see is that our logo is added to the cover page. Next, we can see that our summary is now at the beginning of the report instead of at the end. If we flip through a few pages, we can see our custom header and the changes we made to how the category headers look. Perhaps the biggest change is how the ratings appear, as they are no longer checkboxes, but the rating selection is now spelled out as text. As you can see, with just a few changes, the report looks very different. Now let's go back to report settings and take a look at the rest of the other options available for customizing your report. First, we have the Margins tab. At the top, you can customize the margins as desired. Next is the Page Options tab, and here we have a lot more options that we didn't cover earlier. First is the Create Summaries. If you do not want to create summaries, then uncheck this box. The next option is for numbering the summary items. If you do not want the items in your summary to be numbered, then uncheck this box. Next, we have Combine Rating Summary. By checking this option, the program will create only one summary for each report, instead of having a separate summary for each rating mark to create a summary. After that, we have Use Standard Fonts in Summaries. The way it works by default is that whatever font you use for each note that you type in is the same font that will appear in the summary. If you would like your summary to use the same font throughout, then you should check this box. The next option only applies if you're entering in cost estimates. If Show Cost Estimates in the body of the report is checked, then the information you fill out for cost estimates will show up in the body of the report as well as the cost estimate summary. Next is Use Text Separator. A text separator will separate your notes from your descriptions on each line in the report. By default, this is set to have a dash between the description and the note. By default, the program includes a table of contents at the beginning of each report. If you do not want one, simply uncheck the box. Check Show Enter Lines Only if you only want the lines that have information filled out to appear in the report. Show Line Numbers is checked by default, which means that each item in the category will be numbered. Uncheck this item if you do not want lines to be numbered. The last checkbox is for Secure PDF. If you check this option, the program will add additional level of security to the PDF files that you create. It is important to note that if you do check this, then the PDF files that you create and send to your clients will not be able to be printed. Next, we have View Photos, which is how you control where the pictures you add to the report show up. There are three options to choose from, which are to have the photos in both the body of the report and the summary section, to have them only in the summary, or to have them only in the body of the report. 
We already took a look at the rest of the options of this tab, so let's go ahead and go to the Fonts tab. On this tab, we have three different fonts that we can set, with the first being the template text. This is the font for the main items, such as the category headers and the prompts, such as driveway and walks. Next is the data text. Data text is the font for items such as ratings, descriptions, and the notes that you type in. Next, we have the company name font. This is where you can adjust the font of your company name, which appears on each page of the report. On this tab, we also have the option for photos start on new line. If this option is checked, then all the photos that you add to your reports will show up underneath the line that they are added to. If you uncheck this, and if you only have one photo on the line, it will show up to the right of the line, and if you have multiple photos on a line, then they will show up underneath it. That's a look at the options available for customizing how your reports look. Making changes to report settings are one-time changes, which means once you set them up how you want, you won't have to change them again. As you can see, we have a ton of options to choose from. As you experiment and make changes to the report settings, you can always go back to the out-of-the-box settings by simply clicking on the Restore Default Settings button, which shows up in the lower left-hand corner of each tab in the Report Settings. This concludes a video on Report Presentation Options.